Hey everybody, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Feral Druids going into Shadowlands. Feral throughout Battle for Azeroth has been in a great spot, although limited when it comes to compositions, so what does the future of Shadowlands hold in store for our furry friends? Well, we've hit up Cyfox, a multi-rank 1 Feral, and picked his brains on his current thoughts on how Feral is looking. We'll also be providing you with all the information you need to get started on your own Feral at the start of Shadowlands, including races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. For more information on Cyfox or to watch him stream, you can find him over at Twitch on his channel that you can see here. As with all of these guides, we'll be releasing a refresher guide once Season 1 begins that will cover any outdated information on this guide along with taking a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and discussing compositions. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. First up, let's take a look at how Feral has changed from what it was in BFA. As a base spec, there aren't that many changes as a whole. The majority of changes were abilities becoming baseline, for instance Cyclone, Barkskin, and Iron Fur, as well as a few minor tweaks to the talent tree, with Blood Talons being reworked, Sabretooth being nerfed, and some nice new additions to the different affinities, including the addition of Incapacitating Roar for Guardian Affinity, Vortex for Restoration Affinity, and Typhoon for Balance. In regards to how this affects the playstyle, Feral as always will heavily depend on what composition you are playing, as they've in previous expansions always been able to decide between high single target pressure or the ability to bleed up multiple targets and go for a more rot-oriented playstyle. However, the common theme which remains from BFA is that Feral is more single target burst oriented, looking to help your team secure CC with stuns like Maim or Mighty Bash, bursting, and then potentially landing Cyclones. Alongside all that, you'll be using your downtime to support your team with some incredibly strong off heals, as well as utilizing bear form and mobility in order to survive. So how is Feral shaping up? Is it good or bad? Well, in Shadowlands, Ferals are by no means bad, but they're not exactly top tier either. While Feral does have good burst, very strong off healing and utility, they are just nothing when compared to the likes of a sub rogue or windwalker, so they're sitting middle of the pack for now. However, it's fair to say that Feral requires a lot more effort to play at a higher level, having quite a high skill ceiling. If you're able to fully maximize your utility, burst, and CC, then the potential is definitely there. When asked what he thought Feral's need in terms of tuning, be it buffs or nerfs, Cyfox said that it would be far more beneficial for other classes to be brought down a peg or two, and Feral's would be in a good spot. What would, however, be nice to buff is Feral's bleed damage, as they still hold the playstyle from BFA, focusing more around only Ferocious Bite, dealing any impactful damage, having the ability to multi-bleed and rot down teams makes Feral's a lot more diverse and would open up the potential for more compositions. Alright, with that overview out of the way, let's now talk about how to set up your own Feral Druid ready for the new expansion, starting off with which race to pick. If you're on Alliance side, you'll want to be going Night Elf. Night Elf is honestly the only real option here, providing the super strong ability Shadow Meld, which can be used to enter Prowl while in combat, which can subsequently then secure you an empowered Rake Stun. Not to mention, you can use Shadow Melt to defensively survive almost as a Vanish, use it to avoid hard-hitting spells or just any form of CC. It's a great race and racial for all circumstances. Then, if you're on the Horde side, the best option all around is Torn. Simply put, the Racial War Stomp offers a ton of utility, giving you a on-demand stun that can be used to secure Cyclones, keep targets locked down, secure a kill, or just as a way to stop a cast. This Racial has a ton of uses. Alternatively, you could go Troll for the added damage, but we do recommend sticking with Torin for the utility. Alright, so you've selected your best race now, and it's time to look at Talents starting on the first row. Our recommended choice is going to be Sabretooth. This offers 20% increased damage to Ferocious Bite, which is one of your most important damaging abilities. And on top of that, when you do cast Ferocious Bite, you will also refresh your rip by one second per combo point. The most important aspect of this is the flat out damage increase to Ferocious Bite, as it's an integral part of your burst windows. Dropping down to the level 25 row, the only real option here is going to be Wild Charge. The mobility is just too strong to pass up. You can use it as a gap closer in cap form, a root in bear form, or even a way to escape back to safety if you go into normal form, and it's a must have in all scenarios. Then up next we have the newly buffed affinities. In Shadowlands, these have 
all been slightly buffed to now give a new ability and as such have become a lot stronger. Here you have a decision to make. The default one that you'll find yourself playing with most, however, is Guardian Affinity. This grants you the passive Thick Hide, giving a 6% damage reduction on top of access to Frenzied Regeneration, offering percentage-based healing and one of your best ways to survive defensively. On top of that, the new addition is Incapacitating Roar, bringing a new addition to your CC arsenal, which can be used to disrupt enemies, secure cyclones, or just simply for added CC. Alternatively, the other option is Restoration Affinity. This passively provides you Sarah's Gift, giving a decent heal over time that really adds up. It will also give you access to Swiftmen. This affinity is best for situations like double DPS 2v2, world PvP, or anytime you're looking to utilize your mobility, kite away, and then heal yourself or your teammates. The newly gained ability from Restoration Affinity is Ursul's Vortex, which can just be used to stop enemies kiting or for yourself to build more distance. It's a nice addition. On the level 35 row, we see a new addition, Heart of the Wild, which is a strong ability, but it sadly comes with a very hefty cooldown, not to mention it's on the same row as Mighty Bash, which is a crucial ability. If you've played Barrel before, you know just how integral Mighty Bash is to your kit, having a 60 second CD guaranteed on demand stun, which can be used to secure CC, enable you to cyclone, or even just as a way to lock down your kill target to secure that kill. Once again, dropping down another row, we have the option of Soul of the Forest, Savage Roar, or Incarnation King of the Jungle. On this row, we recommend going for Soul of the Forest, primarily for 3v3. This is the most consistent choice and provides the best overall damage output, giving back 5 energy per combo point spent. And after recent damage buffs to Berserk, it makes Incarnation not as strong. Although Incarnation can still be a great pickup for when you know a game is going to be short, or for double DPS 2v2, or even world PvP scenarios. But in 3v3, the long cooldown means it's too easy to counter and play around trading defensives. Moving on to the penultimate tier, most of which is focused around AoE PvE damage, the best option here is going to be Brutal Slash. This acts basically as an area of effect shred, costing 15 less energy than what shred normally does. Basically, you just use this in your rotation as your generator when you have charges available. The alternatives sadly don't offer much damage and are not useful in a PvP setting. Last up for our final row, we have two choices, Feral Frenzy or the newly reworked Blood Talents. So let's cover where you want each one and why. Barrel Frenzy is a short cooldown that generates 5 combo points and does some decent damage. This is great for when you're playing burst-oriented setup compositions. Getting 5 combo points, popping Tiger's Fury, doing a Ferocious Bite into Feral Frenzy into another Ferocious Bite is going to be your best source of burst damage. Alternatively, we have Blood Talons, which is now reworked to give you its benefit now from doing 3 different combo point generating abilities within 4 seconds. So this could be Rake, Shred, Thrash, or Brutal Slash. This provides a 30% increase to your next two rips or ferocious bites. What this offers is a much higher consistent damage increase, so think compositions where you're mainly aiming to maximize your DPS at the cost of burst. Alright, with normal talents covered and out of the way, let's now move on to the PvP specific talents. First, let's establish a good 3 default talent lineup, and then cover any potential talents that you could consider swapping in. Ferocious Wounds is one of Feral Druid's most impactful and most powerful PvP talents, which has also seen a small buff reducing the enemy's max health by 10% per stack, maxing out at two stacks. Previously, this was 8% and was still a mandatory pick. So as you can imagine, it's only gotten stronger. Our second pick for default talents is going to be Leader of the Pack. This is important because of the defensive self-healing that you and your partners gain from this, getting 4% of their maximum health pool when they critically strike. This talent actually contributes a ton to the overall survivability of yourself and your team. Not selecting this will result in your team easily being cleaved down, especially now with Shadow Priests and Affliction Warlocks being at the forefront of the meta. Then for our third PvP talent, we recommend Strength of the Wild as a default pick. This increases your maximum health pool in bear form by 15%, as well as buffing your off healing when in caster form, as any castered regrowth on your partners will be a guaranteed critical strike. It's a strong defensive tool for yourself and your partners. Okay, so let's talk about when you'll want to swap around these PvP talents and what you should consider replacing them with. First up, Thorns is a must when facing double melee teams or melee caster teams without a 
spammable perch. This adds a ton of damage and also acts as a pseudo defensive and can be taken in place of Strength of the Wild. The next option is Savage Momentum. This is a great choice when up against caster teams or specifically when you're aiming to sit on a caster all game and lock him down. This in return will then reduce the cooldown of your Tiger's Fury and Survival Instincts for every successful kick you land, buffing your damage and defensive output. Consider swapping this for Strength of the Wild. Then last up is a newly introduced PvP talent with Shadowlands, High Winds. What this does is reduce the damage a target does by 25% after they come out of your Cyclone. This can be a very solid pickup in cases where you're looking to consistently peel with your Cyclone. For example, a team is training down your healer or you're playing with a caster who's getting trained and it's up to you to peel for them. Any case where where you find yourself cycloning consistently to peel, this will be a great choice. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the new additions to the game added with Shadowlands, Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendaries. First of all, let's begin with your Covenant choice. For Feral Druids, there is only one real option as of right now, and that's Necrolords. The sole reason for this is to gain access to the Adaptive Swarm class ability. This ability is extremely powerful. It's a fairly short cooldown damage over time effect that also empowers your own dots. So we've got a short cooldown, high damage, it's just a great all-around covenant ability. Siding with the Necrolord also gives you access to Fleshcraft, adding some nice extra self-survivability on top of the immunity to CC if a full channel is completed. Oh, by the way, if you are enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Anyway, now that we've sided with the Necrolords, it's time to choose a Soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. There are three Soulbinds available to the Necrolords. These are Ebony, Plague Divisor Merilith, and Bonesmith Hammer. Out of these three, the one that stands out for Feral Druids and most classes in regards to PvP is the Plague Divisor Merilith. The main reason for this is two abilities in particular, Ooze's Frictionless Coating and Ultimate Form. Ultimate Form gives you four seconds of CC immunity after channeling Fleshcraft. And as you can see, the Frictionless Coating acts as a last stand if you drop below 50% with a very short cooldown giving you the ability to survive swaps a lot easier. On screen now, you can see the Soulbind route that we recommend. Now, you may notice that there are a lot of gaps. Well, these are filled with what's called a conduit. Conduits are separated into three categories, finesse, potency, and endurance. Potency focuses on damage, finesse focuses on mobility and utility, and then endurance is all about surviving and defensives. Following the selected route from above, we gain access to one finesse conduit, two potency, and one endurance. For the first slot, which is a finesse conduit, we're going to want Born of the Wilds. Essentially what this does is just reduce the cooldown of Mighty Bash or Heart of the Wild, allowing for more consistent setups. Following our route, the next slot is a potency conduit, and for this we want to select Taste for Blood. This gives a large increase to ferocious bite damage based on how many bleeds you have active on the target, which is great for single target burst. Then for our next potency conduit, Carnivorous Instinct is going to be the best pick providing a static increase to your Tiger's Fury damage bonus, providing a little more burst. And last but not least, we have an Endurance Conduit, for which we recommend picking up Tough as Bark. This just provides a static decrease to the cooldown of Bark Skin, great for some added survivability. So, this will leave our fully completed tree looking like so. Which leads us to our final section in this guide, Legendaries. Legendaries are again making their return to the game. This time though, there is a new selection and they all work in Arena. Currently, you're only able to equip one, but this may change in the future. For Feral right now, the best choice is going to be Eye of Fearful Symmetry. What this does is cause your Tiger's Fury to cause your next finisher to give three combo points. This is great in helping with burst windows, and with this build primarily focusing around ferocious bite damage and short burst windows, this is the optimal legendary choice. Alternatively, you could pick up Drought of Deep Focus, which increases healing over time or damage over time effects by 30% on a single target if you're only dotting up one target and focusing on single target pressure. Beyond that, a great option for double DPS 2v2 or even world PvP is going to be Oath of the Elder Druid. This empowers your affinity when you shift into its form, giving you Heart of the Wild. This paired up with Restoration or Guardian Affinity makes for some great added survivability. Alright then, that's going to do it for our first look at Feral Druids in the up-and-coming expansion, Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on the information you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even what your best compositions are. But that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.